Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 1st, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Yes, it's true, I'm back again for my fifth season as the counter at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. And last year I made these daily videos to keep everyone up to date with what's happening. And so I'm going to give it a try again this year. For those of you who are new, the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch is held near Rochester, New York. And we conduct a daily count in the spring from March 1st to May 31st of the raptors that are migrating through this area. So that's hawks, eagles, falcons, and vultures. But I also pay attention to all of the birds. And I'm the official counter, so I'm out there every day counting all of these species. This area is a major concentration point for migrating birds because they're following the edge of Lake Ontario. For those of you who are new to hawk watching and raptor identification, we here at Lyco Birds just released a new article today called How to Identify the Five Major Groups of Raptors. And this article has tons of information and pictures that can help you get started and to learn how to tell the differences between not just the individual species, but how do you first tell which group a raptor belongs to? Is it a falcon? Is it a hawk? Is it an eagle? So I'm gonna put a link to this article in the description below so be sure to check that out even if you're not a beginner i think you'll get a lot of value from this article and i will also put a link to our guide to hawk watching and raptor identification and this guide is just a collection of all the materials that we've put together that are related to these topics so all of our articles and links to all of our youtube videos as well so be sure to check that out Today was overcast for most of the day with light to moderate easterly winds, making it feel a bit chilly. We did have the sun pop out in the afternoon in the 2 p.m. hour, and it got a few raptors up, but overall not much raptor activity yet this early in the season. The bay is mostly open. There is some ice over in the marina and the near creek, and so it made a nice edge of ice that there were a lot of waterfowl concentrated along. Moving on to the birds, we did have some eagles around in the morning. Here we have a bald eagle that's not quite a full adult. You can see it looks mostly like an adult, but still has a little bit of white in the areas that it would normally be dark. And you can see it still has some dark in the tail and the head, which would become white when it's a full adult. There were a lot of galls around in the early morning. I got to the park around 8 a.m. I would say there were a few thousand galls scattered around the ice. Here we have a group of herring galls, which are what most of the galls are. A lot of people avoid galls because they can be difficult to identify, but when you see these immature galls that are really dark underneath like this, these are herring galls. You can also see it has a bulkier body than you would see on the skinnier ring-billed galls. And here's what the herring galls look like when they get older and become adults. Um, you can see that on the bill it doesn't have that ring that the ring-billed galls have. It has like a black dot and a red dot. You can see the pink legs as well. Here's a common raven and there was a group of four common ravens in the morning that flew by croaking and then I saw a couple of them checking out the cell phone tower in the distance as well. This is a flock of northern pintails flying but this photo also gives you an idea of what I was talking about with that ice edge. Um, whenever you have an edge of ice like this you get a lot of birds concentrating along the edge so the ducks in the water and then on the ice itself, a lot of times you'll get things like mute swans and tundra swans and also galls. Here we have another bald eagle, this one an immature. We would call this a white belly. You can see how white it is underneath. Um, and the white belly eagles are your second and third years. We kind of lump them together because from a distance they're difficult to age exactly. Here we have two mute swans. And mute swans are non-native and could even be considered invasive because of the habitat destruction they cause and their aggressiveness towards native species. But it's a bit of a management concern because um, it's a species that's kind of big and beautiful and obvious. So um, there kind of has to be a balance between, you know, how do you handle this non-native species that's becoming invasive. But up here in the Rochester area, mute swans are extremely common. I've seen as many as 200 of them out on Braddock Bay at a time. In many other parts of the country, mute swans are quite rare to see, so it might be special for someone from out of the area to see so many. And I also wanted to comment on this lead bird's neck. It's kind of hanging down and curved a little bit. Um, it was flying with it like that continually, so I don't know if that's um, 
some kind of injury. Normally when you see them fly, they have the straight neck like this. Um, so this was a little bit less common to see. Here we have a flock of five ducks and there's two different species here. If we look at this top bird, it's a male northern pintail. You can see that long tail feather where it gets its name from. You can also see a little bit of the head markings with that white stripe that comes up the neck. This bird here is also another male pintail, although you can't see the tail because another bird is blocking it. And then these three other birds with the kind of squared off tails, these are wood ducks. And I took this photo because wood ducks are a little less common to see this time of year. Um, normally as we get into the season, they're a little more common to see, um, but it was a good species to get for the first day. And they can also be hard to get because a lot of times they don't hang out in the open like the other ducks might. They're kind of more down in the marsh. So your better chance of seeing them is when they fly. Here's part of a big flock that came over us. And these left-hand birds, you can see, are darker. These are Canada geese. And the left half of the flock was Canada geese. But you can see the main group here in the photo. These are snow geese. And you can see that they're white geese and they have black wingtips, which is an important distinction from swans because when swans fly, they don't have black wingtips. They have white wingtips. Their wings just look completely white. So when you see the black on the wingtips, that lets you know that you're looking at snow geese. Here we have two birds that look similar, but one is smaller than the other. So this bird on the left is a Canada goose. But if we look at this bird on the right, we see it looks like it has a small bill, a really short neck, a smaller overall size. So I think this might be a cackling goose, which is a separate species than Canada goose. They look pretty similar overall in plumage, um, but they have some of those differences that I just described. And really the best way to tell them apart is to get a good look when they're on the ground and be able to really see what the shape of the bill is along with the small size. When they're flying over, you don't always have the benefit of a good look at the bill. But from what I can see in the photo, I would probably call this a cackling goose. You have to be careful sometimes because there's a lot of different subspecies of Canada goose and some of them are much larger than others. So sometimes just seeing a size difference isn't enough to confidently say that uh, the smaller goose is a cackling goose. But in this case, I think it is. Here we have a horned lark and we had a small number of horned larks today. I think the total was eight. And uh, these are just a, a common species that we see migrating through in small groups, sometimes large groups. Um, if you see them when out birding, usually you're looking for them in farmland areas, out in big groups on farm fields. Um, but in Braddock Bay, we just kind of see them flying over. They don't, occasionally they'll, they'll drop in the grass in small numbers, but usually they're just flying by. And here's another horned lark that has that more typical kind of male facial pattern to it, a little bit stronger pattern. Here we have an adult bald eagle, maybe one of the ones from one of the local nests. Here we have a ring-billed gall, and the distinguishing features we look at for ring-billed versus herring is ring-billed have this dark ring, black ring on the bill. They also have yellow legs and feet, and they kind of have a smaller size to them and don't look as bulky. So when you get ring-billed and herring together, you can use the size difference as one of the easiest ways to tell them apart. But otherwise, you're looking at that bill and the color of the legs and feet. Adult herring galls have pink legs and feet. The uh, wingtip pattern is pretty similar between herring gall and ring-billed gall, so that doesn't help much. Here we have some more northern pintails, and again, we can see those long tail feathers. Here we have some tundra swans, and you can tell tundra swans from mute swans in that tundra swans don't have that orange on the bill that mute swans have. They just have a black bill. They sometimes have some yellow kind of in front of the eye. Um, that can be tough to see from a distance and also it's variable how much of that they show. There's also a third species of swan that we could get which is trumpeter swan which looks similar to tundra swan although tundra swans are quite a bit smaller than both mute swans and trumpeters. Mutes and trumpeters are quite large about the same size um, but with the trumpeter swans we don't get them in big flocks we might get one or two that show up and trumpeter swans compared to tundra swans they're their bill is kind of longer and more sloped looking and just that overall size. Here's a female northern cardinal perched up in a tree. Here we have a pair of house finches and you can see the male on the bottom has all of that red that the female does not. Here's some more tundra swans high overhead. And again, remember that swans do not have any black in the wings, whereas snow geese have black tips to the wings. Here we have an immature great black-backed gall. 
the largest species of gall in the world. And I had three great black-backed galls today, two adults and then this immature. And if you ever feel cold while you're out birding, just be glad that you're not kite surfing on a frigid Lake Ontario. If we take a look at the eBird checklist from today, we see I had 56 species. And I'll put a link to this if you want to check out all of the numbers and all of my photos that I took today. If we look at the hawk count report, we see that today there was a grand total of one migrating raptor, which was a distant red-tailed hawk, too distant to get photos, that uh, passed through in the 2 p.m. hour when the sun popped out for a little bit. The bald eagles that were around, I did not count as migrants. For the non-raptor notes, I included my usual numbers and the link to the eBird checklist, but this year I'm also going to experiment with writing a few paragraphs just to put things more into perspective. If we look at the forecast, tomorrow is looking cloudy with west-northwest winds that are fairly strong, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Wouldn't expect a whole lot of migration just because it's so early in the season. For Friday and Saturday, we're looking at a potential winter storm moving in. Might get out for a little bit on Friday morning, but Friday and Saturday, with the winds and everything, I wouldn't expect there to be many raptors at all. Well, it's great to be back in Rochester and back at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Good to see some people who came out to visit and say hello this morning. I know there's not a whole lot of raptors this early in the season, but over the next few weeks, things will pick up. Be on the lookout especially for southwest wind. Any day that's kind of abnormally warm with southwest wind, those are the days that we get the highest number of migrants. The Hawk Watch is held in Braddock Bay Park, and it's open to the public. Anyone can come out and visit and hang out. There's no admission fee or anything, so just show up, bring your binoculars, and hang out, and we'll watch some birds together. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.